can't think about the city of Las Vegas without picturing images of twinkling light bulbs, colorful neon lighting, and street signs that are bigger than life. But as fast as new, flashy hotels pop up, older hotels face a more dramatic end. Many of these iconic hotels of Las Vegas' past have long since been destroyed, but it's the job of the Neon Museum and Boneyard to preserve their memory. My name is Danielle Kelly. I'm the executive director of the Neon Museum here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Neon Museum began as an organized effort really in the early 90s. Our mission is to save the neon of Las Vegas, which is truly uh, innovative in the field. Uh, we, we recognize and want to shed light on the fact that neon signage in Las Vegas is very unique. It speaks to design, it speaks to art, it, it speaks to incredible fabrication and craftsmanship, and it, it speaks to architectural trends. So really all of those things are encapsulated uh, in this thing that is Las Vegas Neon. One of the signature pieces in the Neon Museum's collection is the La Concha Motel Lobby. This Las Vegas motel opened in 1961 and closed in 2003. We are at our heart a preservation organization uh, and recognizing the significance of Las Vegas neon signage as not only this, this art form that encompasses design, but it also encompasses architecture. So in that spirit of architecture, we had the opportunity to save the La Concha from demolition. The La Concha itself was built in 1961. It was one of the, it was one of the few remaining Googie buildings. Googie as a design trend, a mid-century modern design trend. It was designed by Paul Revere Williams, who was the first African-American architect admitted into the American Institute of Architects. Really significant building on a lot of different levels. So the opportunity to save it from destruction, bringing it here, and rehabilitating it into our visitor center was just, a, it seemed a really perfect fit. And it really um, celebrated not only what this signage is and can be, um, but also uh, it celebrates a kind of time period of Las Vegas that everyone really has this wonderful romantic nostalgia for. Las Vegas's past is quite different than most other cities. And although there isn't a traditional historic significance associated with the signs of old hotels, the art and design of each piece in the Neon Museum's collection speaks volumes about Las Vegas's culture throughout the decades. Well, you know, Las Vegas is a really young city, so um, the idea of preservation is kind of a novel one, really, in a city this age. Also, this reinvention is really a part of the identity and psychology of this city. Saving the signs isn't, isn't an immediate priority for a lot of people, but that's really changing. What's significant about these signs is that they are innovative and they speak to a very particular art form of uh, 20th century America, and it's a significant innovation that happened in this city that didn't happen anywhere else. So what's important about saving it here is, is just like what's important about saving Colonial Williamsburg. A lot of these objects will be gone if we don't take care of them. And the stories they have to tell are really important, not only for Las Vegas, but for America and, and for the globe. If you come here, you'll see signage that everyone would recognize. For example, iconic pieces from the Sahara, iconic pieces from the Flamingo, from the Tropicana, from the Stardust. Uh, so those, those pieces that really are a part of everyone's shared kind of cultural memory, uh, we've seen them in movies and television shows, uh, family photos, that sort of thing. But then what you'll also experience here is signage that is uh, really important to the cultural and social history of Las Vegas itself. So for example, you'll see the Moulin Rouge sign, which was the first racially integrated casino resort in Las Vegas. You'll see the Green Shack, which was a really important marker um, for people uh, traveling from the Boulder Dam into Las Vegas. It was the first restaurant you saw on the way in, and it was the last one you hit on your way out. Um, so those kinds of things, these, these little things that are really important to Las Vegas local history um, that maybe visitors coming to town won't know about, but once they leave the Boneyard, they will, they will definitely share the passion for. The name Boneyard seems rather odd for a museum about neon signs, 
Actually, the word boneyard refers to an open area where large objects or machinery are held. Some people refer to the boneyard as a graveyard. It's not a graveyard. Nothing dies here. The boneyard is the bones of the sign. And the, the sign becomes animated and, and is given life when it is electrified. So boneyard is the bones of the sign. And that's where the signs are held. If you're planning on visiting the Neon Museum, be sure to give yourself some time. It's a very large area with lots to see. Oh yeah, and don't forget to bring a camera. There are some great photo opportunities everywhere you look. My favorite sign? That's a hard question. Um, I really love all of them. Uh, you know, one of my favorite signs is a really unassuming sign called the uh, Midtowner Motel Apartments. It, it's not famous. Um, but, you know, it does its job as a sign really well. Um, it, it's kind of a modified arrow shape. It has a lot of different texts and font designs in it. So it's really um, uh, busy and kind of eclectic. One of my personal favorites is the sign from the old Stardust Hotel. Its design was heavily influenced by the Space Age. Another location to visit in Las Vegas also has its roots in the Space Age, but at a more atomic level. We'll be traveling there next.